Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. This week we're going to the big house, as in prison, to the men's colony in San Luis Obispo. Why, you might ask? Well, there's an amazing program which involves inmates, dogs, and special training, which is helping all involved. Then the pet psychic Laura Stinchfield works with animal chiropractor Sherry Gaber and a cat that can't walk. Cece Bodette Wellman of Happy Endings Animal Sanctuary in San Inez introduces us to a remarkable program which combines horses with at-risk youths. So Mikey, it's out of the doghouse, but don't pass go because we're going to go directly to jail right here on Animal Zone. <laughs> Bonjour Alex. Bonjour Renaud. Happiness, it's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we provide low-cost spay and neuter services and vaccinations. It's important for your dogs and cats to get vaccinated to prevent illnesses. And spay and neuter surgeries help prevent unwanted pregnancies and can benefit the health of your pet. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not chop. Today we're at the California Men's Colony in San Luis Obispo in California. Now this is a prison and it's a special one because they work with inmates and dogs. And part of that reason is there's an organization called the Sun Care Foundation that has brought on New Life Canine. And with us is Dylan Jameson from uh, Sun Care Foundation. Hi, great to be here, thank you. Thanks for having us and um, tell us how this started. So Sun Care Found Foundation started uh, back in 94. Um, as a mentoring program and the, um, the founder um, wanted to have kind of a mission of saving lives so uh, as the mentoring program got built up uh, they wanted to be self-supporting so they started a, uh, a pet resort called Thousand Hills Pet Resort here in San Luis Obispo um, to give the mentor uh, students um, work experience so they uh, worked at the pet resort part-time, um, got mentoring um, and then as the pet resort built up, they decided that they wanted to also uh, teach service dogs. Um, and so an employee at the pet resort started uh, training service dogs. And then um, the founder and um, our director of education, Nicole Hearn, um, decided that they would like to work with inmates as well to help with their uh, rehabilitative process. Um, so then they uh, started working out at, the, at the, out at the prison to work with the inmates and help them um, and uh, work with the dogs. Now, I understand that the dogs that come here are, you said, helping the inmates. And the inmates, are they helping the dogs too? Yeah, so the inmates are the uh, dogs uh, trainers, basically. So Monday through Friday, they're their primary uh, trainer. That's their duty. Their, um, 20, their dogs are here 24 hours a day. Uh, 
Monday through Friday, um, and then on the weekends they go home with volunteers, uh, but the inmates are primarily responsible for uh, training the dogs. Now, I would imagine when the inmates are working with these dogs, they must also bond with them as well. Uh, but those dogs ultimately are donated to uh, other uh, well-deserving folks. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. So um, after the two years of training with the inmate, the service dogs are given free of charge to a veteran or first responder who has PTSD. Um, first responders include firefighters, police officers, anybody um, in that type of uh, work is eligible for a service dog. Um, and they do have to be medically diagnosed with PTSD. Um, yeah, so after, after the two years uh, bonding with the inmate, the inmates um, go through a process where they learn how, how to give up their dog. It is hard, but it is part of the process. Um, and then an inmate gets, or a, a veteran or first responder gets a, a new life, as we say, um, with uh, their service dog. Well, this is a great win-win-win for all involved. Let's go take a look at some of the dogs and the inmates that they work with. Okay, here we are with Josh and his dog, Cole, who you've been working with for some time, since he was a puppy? Yeah, since he was eight weeks old. Wow, and uh, he's learned a lot, of, a lot of things. I mean, I just noticed how you got him to sit down before he started. Uh, what are some of the things you've been training him for? Um, we teach him to uh, try to understand a lot of language, so not really direct commands, but like through body language, uh, just to interpret what you're asking him to do. So you're using hand signals, and yeah. uh, and he seems to be doing so good. So right now, in fact, I'd like to get down and say hello to Cole. Hey, Cole, how are you? Oh, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Um, now Cole stays here inside the the facility with you, right? And the uh, you guys all sleep together, so to speak. Yeah, he sleeps at the foot of my bed. He's got a crate. Um, I just put him in there at night, and uh, sometimes I'll leave it open. He can come in and out. Sometimes he'll jump on the bed, but it's a small bed, so. Are there other dogs in the same room? Yeah, we've got like 12 dogs in this dorm and a couple in the dorm next door. So. And have you trained them all to get on with one another? Yeah, yeah, they all get along fine. Okay. What's having him in your life brought to your life? Um, it's kind of brought, I would say, a sense of purpose. I mean, we get to give to a higher cause, you know, because my brother, um, he did two tours in Iraq and I, it visibly changed his, for me. Um, he came back and he was, he drank a lot of alcohol and I could really see what the war did to him and to be able to give back to the veterans in some kind of a way, it's really special. You know, it's, it's a purpose more important than myself, you know, so. Do you want to work with dogs when you leave here? I would like to, yes. I would enjoy it. Uh -huh. So it's really an enriching experience for you. Oh yeah, I mean, it's cool because you get to, you get to give and receive unconditional love and then in a way you can give that to somebody else. So it's, it's a good, it's a nice gift. Good for the soul, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Animals are amazing what they give us. Oh yeah. Well Josh, thank you so much for joining us today on Animal Zone. We appreciate it, we appreciate it, and wish you lots of good luck. Awesome, all right, thank you. Thank you, pleasure. Pleasure. Okay, and now we're here with Will and Dazzle. his dog, Dazzle. And yeah. Dazzle is how old? She is 13 months old. And how long have you had her? Uh, eight months. Wow, so you've had her since she was a little pup, huh? Yeah, I've been very blessed. How's it going? It's going awesome. She looks like she's in love. She's a, yeah, she's <laughs> a great dog. She brings a lot of joy to my life. She's a pleasure, everyone she meets, she's, she's awesome. What are some of the things you've trained her to do? Um, right now, go get help, um, open doors, um, working on her, her, getting her to put laundry away, actually. It's, it's a work in progress. Wait, wait, I could use a dog like yeah. that. <laughs> Pretty handy. So, yeah. Wow. And, and she stays in here with you, right? Yes, yeah, she does. Wow. She lives right in front of my bunk, actually. Pretty great. Huh? Yeah, awesome. Yeah. She's, she's great. Wait, every, every morning I wake up, she puts a smile on my face. She's... And ultimately, she'll be going to some deserving vet or Absolutely. Uh, first responder. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a, a difficult separation, but it's going to be uh, welcomed. Well, she's a super looking dog yeah, and she's a beautiful, beautiful coat and look at her. Super she, playful. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. She's awesome. Well, we'll uh, appreciate you joining us today on Animal Zone. Well, and thank uh, you. Good luck to you and good luck to Dazzle. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. 
It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. And we're back here at the California Men's Colony in San Luis Obispo. And joining us is Rose Mendoza, who's a canine educator. Tell me what that is exactly. So <laughs> um, there's a lot of roles that I, I do. I started working for New Life Canines just as a dog trainer. Um, over the time, we expanded to our prison programs. So now, I, instead of just working directly with the dogs, I work with the inmate handlers and our volunteers and also the dogs, <laughs> um, as if they if just to if they're struggling with a certain area, I kind of um, give it a try and see what things could motivate them in their learning process. Now I see a lot of the dogs come here as puppies, don't they? They they do. They come in when they're eight weeks old. Um, that's usually the average that they come in. And how long do they stay? Um, they stay for two years. Um, sometimes it could be a year and a half if they're really mature, um, but usually it's roughly around two years. You train them in certain ways to recognize hand movements, but other th signals as well. So they so our dogs are very um, smart overall. They have adapted to our social cues um, more so than we have adapted to theirs. <laughs> um, a lot of people like have a hard time still understanding dog body language but the way dogs understand our body language is way more better <laughs> um, they do it better than us <laughs> so they um, sometimes yeah they do work um, respond to our hand signals but sometimes they um, respond to our emotional response so for example when we work um, the dogs to leaving stuff on the floor instead of saying leave it we go ew so nasty so the dog is realizing that hey my, the way my expression is, they're, they're, it's a social cue. So they're also learning to not just respond to what I'm saying, but to respond to my emotions and my face gestures. Well, Rose, that's really fascinating. Let's go take a look at the dogs in action. Well, here we are with Osa and his dog, Gregor. And Gregor, how old is Gregor? Gregor is 17 uh, months. <laughs> and he's a very loving pup, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is very loving and affectionate. Uh, <laughs> and he has other, other relatives here, doesn't he? Yes, he, uh, that's about six, or six uh, Arizona dogs, we call them. Um, they came from Coal Haven uh, Breeder out in Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, his older brother is here, and his older brother is looking to be graduating in August. So how long have you been working with Gregor? Um, I have been assigned with Gregor since February 28th of 2018. Hey, but can you come this way? I know you, I know. I needed to get a little wash anyway. Um, Thank you. Oh, look, look at that. Thank you. And uh, how, is, how is it working with Gregor? Um, it's been a blessing and, and um, the program and working with Gregor has helped me humanize myself again and reconnect to my human side. Um, coming into the system, we put up a lot of walls and we shut ourselves off emotionally and Gregor has been able to help me come out of my role as um, a convict and then into a human side, right? So more loving, more... So having to love and care for him helped me re-understand what love is to really tru truly care for a, another being. So. It has been a blessing. That, that is wonderful. And it looks like you've given a lot to Gregor, too. He's a very happy pup. Yes, but I, I believe he has given me more than I have given him. So having given the opportunity to be with him and care for him and nurture him has been a blessing. has been a truly a blessing. What, what's your biggest challenge in working with Gregor? Um, I think at time, um, having to really work with my with my patient, right? Um, they're like a two-year-old, five-year-old child, um, and they are with us sometimes 24 hours out of the day, seven days a week, and having to um, learn how to check my emotion and check what I'm going through so that it doesn't transfer down the leash to him um, has been, at times, very challenging. But uh, like I said, overall, it's, it, it's been a blessing. It's probably gonna be heartbreaking to let him go, but yeah, it's been a blessing. 
Well, it's great to meet you and great to meet Gregor, and you guys are doing a great job here. So thank you for joining us on Animal Thank Zone. you for coming out. Okay, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We from the get-go established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic. As we enter, the Animal Zone. Today we're at AB Ranch in Santa Paula, California with Laura Stinchfield, our pet psychic, along with Jordana. We have Sherry, who is a chiropractor for animals, and Zena. And uh, you brought Zena along. What's, what's been going on with Zena? Well, um, Zena seemed to be completely fine. And then around December or in, in mid-December, she just stopped walking. She started dragging her back legs around. And um, so we've tried a number of different uh, things and we thought we'd see what Sherry could do today. How old is Zena? Zena uh, is going to be 15 next month in May. Right. Has you, have you ever taken her to a, chi a chiropractor before? Um, she did see a chiropractor a couple of times. We've tried acupuncture. Um, you know, we've tried a lot of different treatments. She's adapted well, but doesn't seem to be, you know, comfortable. And I just, I want to make her comfortable and maybe get her walking again, if at all possible. So Zena, honey, what do you want to say about how you feel? She said that she really hopes that Sherry can help her today because she's feeling really depressed about her situation and my back legs just don't work. Oh, well I spoke to her the other day and so what, what she's saying now is that she's trying really hard to do what I told her to do and to imagine herself in really good health, but she's still having a really hard time. And she says that she just wants to be alive. Oh, okay, well. Let's take a, look. Yeah. take a look at her. Poor little thing. I'm going to look at what the head is doing first. All right, so her skull is quite tipped down on the right side of the nervous system. So again, it's pretty severe. That right rear, and you can see that it's pretty bent. It's called positive conscious proprioception. So that right rear isn't talking to the cerebellum to say push. So Zena, I'm going to turn you around, honey. And I'm going to feel your neck. With her misalignment, could that create her not being able to walk at all? Yes, and because I don't see any x-rays, um, I don't know if there's a disc problem, but this is a big factor to the rear legs talking to the brain or not. I'm just feeling, see if you feel tight or sore anywhere else. All right, okay, so. I know she sticks um, out a lot right here too, more than usual. Yeah. Well, she's getting, the, her muscles are um, atrophying, they're getting thinner and thinner, because mm -hmm. you need movement to keep up muscle tone. Let's see with what she's got, if I can make it work better. Okay. We'll see. So I'm gonna turn you around, honey. All right, here we go. So if you could hold her there, hold her. All right, so I'm gonna get your head on straight, honey. And if you get a little head rush, that's because of increased blood circulation, okay? It's not going to hurt. Everything's angles. So I'm just getting the head to lift up. So I'm giving the left side a little impetus to move. And you don't need very much force to move vertebra or the skull. It's all angles. That's why I was able to do a buffalo, a 1,400-pound buffalo with the same amount of force. Wow. Come here. It's all angles. Okay, good. I lifted up her skull. 
Okay, Laura, can you hold her shoulders for me? And Jordana, you hold her. Hold it. Let me get her atlas in line now. Okay, so I feel it, just a certain angle. I just give it impetus to move. Move that hand a little bit, thanks. So the vertebra, you know, everything fits together like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. And when things get stuck, it's because these two muscle centers in the brainstem get off balance when the first vertebra misaligns. So then abnormal type muscles pull and contract all the way down the spine and keeps things misaligned. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to the fuse box of the whole body, mm -hmm. getting those two muscle centers balanced. Okay, so the brain stem, 300 trillion nerves. I just cleared that. So now we'll see what we get. She says she feels a lot of energy to her head. Yeah, that must be And good. a pulsating down her spine. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, so let's just see what we get. Well, she... Okay, she's got more... She's getting more movement. Yeah, she definitely has more movement there. Okay. You feel like you can lift your neck up higher? That's good. The tension behind your ears has gone away. You feel like your heart is getting more love to it. Well, <laughs> we all could use that. That sounds great. Sure, you're a miracle worker. It's incredible. Now, for our viewers who are watching this, how can they find out more about what you do? Uh, you can go to my website, sherrygaberdc.com, and that's S-H-E-R-R-Y, Gaber, G as in George, A, B as in boy, E-R-D-C.com. Wow, fantastic. Thank you all. This has been just amazing, as always here on Animal Zone. We're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back after these words. My grandfather taught me about the beauty of the rugs. Each one tells a story. Story about the person who wove it, the person who bought it, the person who inherits it, the person who treasures it. It's amazing how simply looking at an object can bring you back to a different place and time or remind you of someone you love. At Santa Barbara Design Center, we want to help you find a rug that will travel through time with your family for generations to come. Visit us at 410 Olive Street and find your treasure today. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. What a sweet horse you are. Today we're at Happy Ending Sanctuary in Solvang, California, and joining us is the founder, Cece Bodet Wellman. And Cece, so great to see you today. Nice to see you. Now, you have a program here called Angel Horses. Uh, actually, it's called Horse Angels. Horse Angels, okay. <laughs> Tell us about Horse Angel. What is that exactly? Our program uh, is for at risk youth, kids that are troubled and kids that need someone to believe in and to love them and listen to them unconditionally. And our horses are the teachers and the friends. So they really are angels. They are angels. Wow. And the this... kids are the angels to the horses and the horses are angels to the kids. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Absolutely. And how long have you been doing the program? We've been doing uh, probably 12 years. In that program, you're training kids as well, right? They're learning about horses. We are teaching them that horses have emotions and feelings very similar to their own, and so that they can uh, have a relationship with the horse and to be able to trust it and use it in just like any other friend just like a, a person friend. Only, horses are unconditional, just like any animal. So when you tell a secret, it's never gonna go anywhere. And usually with humans, you're not so sure. It's true. Of course, unless the horse is Mr. Ed, which we know is a talking <laughs> horse, but he's not here, right? Tell me, this is, is this Tucker? This is Tucker. Oh, and he goes back a long way in your family, doesn't he? He does. His great-grandfather was our stallion uh, for years and years and years growing up. So um, 
This is a very, very special horse, and he just had his 30th birthday. He doesn't look a day over, well, he doesn't look long in the tooth, <laughs> let's put it that way. You look great, Tucker. And now when you have a horse that is a friend, they can also pick up your vibes, right? I mean, there's a different language between people and horses. Absolutely. It's an energy, right? They can tell your pulse, I'm told. Yes. Uh, they can feel all sorts of different things, emotions. Uh, they can tell if you're angry or sad. Um, you know, I can come out at any given day and these horses can read me and they modify what they're going to do and how they're going to act to me just by what I'm feeling inside. Well, Cece, this is great, and uh, I'd like to learn more about the program firsthand. Can you show us how it works? Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for coming to our Horse Angels program. Uh, today, we are going to be asking you guys to help us help our friend Tucker here. <laughs> And here we are with Khalifa, who uh, is an old student here at uh, Happy Endings. You've been in this program in the past. Well, what did you think about horses when you first came here? Well, ever since I was little, I grew up around my, I guess, horse side of the family, and I've always loved them. I've always told my mom, you know, just get me a Shetland pony. It's just like a big dog. Never happened, but, you know, I always watched all the horse movies, had a bunch of horse stuffed animals, my grandma would get me horse hats, and you know, my favorite horse movie was Spirit, so I was like really, like a hardcore horse lover. <laughs> so when you got here and actually got one-on-one -on -one experiences with horses, what changed? I guess my love for horses amplified and you know, I've always loved rescued animals because you know, they're not broken or damaged, they just like didn't get the love that they deserve, and I thought you know, me being the live little girl that I was, you know, I can fix that. And so just coming here, like, okay, I'm on a mission, you know. A any surprises when you first started interacting with horses, things you didn't expect? I didn't expect them to actually listen and care th as much as they do, because, you know, back then I was broken and I thought it was beyond repair. But, you know, coming here piece by piece, I got confidence back in who the person I was um, and I felt safer and I had like an escape to go to whenever I felt unsafe. When you look at some of the horses here now, do you get a sense of what you want to be doing in the future? Do you want to stay with horses? Is that a plan of yours? Yeah, I want to stay with horses. I want to probably become a veterinarian and you know, I want to like get rescue horses, you know, probably one day own my own ranch or something, you know, that's like my goal in life. You know, other people are like, oh, I want this car, I want this big of a house, I want to go here. I'm like, I just want a horse and then I'll be the happiest person alive. I like your priorities, Khalifa, that's great. Well, thank you for coming on Animal Zone today and uh, we're going to take a quick break and we come back, we've got more Animal Zone, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Carrie Burns, and I'm the Executive Director for the Santa Barbara Humane Society. And what we want you to know is that humane societies are local to each community. No one is associated with the National Humane Society. So when you donate or you adopt, know that everything that you touch is right there in your own backyard. We want you to donate, volunteer, and adopt. For more information, visit sphumanesociety.org. There's some amazing animals and guests. You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine time so glad you're my best friend through thick and thin we'll see things through can
nine of mine so true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way it's still serendipity When I saw you it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie wanna be Oh, canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend